Welcome to step 3 of making a top-down adventure game in Pico 8. In this step, we'll add movement to our player. If you just started Pico 8, you'll need to load your game. Type Load Adventure Game, or whatever name you gave your game in the first step. If you type part of the name and hit Tab, it will autocomplete the rest of the name. Then hit Enter. Once it's loaded, hit Escape and we'll get started. Now that we have a player and a map, we want the player to be able to walk around the map. Basically, we'll just tell our game to constantly check to see if the player presses any buttons. And if they do, move the player. We'll also check to make sure the player actually can move before we move them. We don't want the player walking through walls on our map. Remember the sprite flags we use in step 1 to mark tiles that are walls? Now we can use those to check map tiles before we move the player. If they're trying to move onto a map tile that has a wall sprite flag turned on, we can stop them. In order to do that, we need to write a function that can tell us if a map tile has a certain sprite flag turned on or not. So we need a function that takes three pieces of information, the sprite flag we want to check, and the x and y of the map tile coordinate we want to check. Using that information, the function should give us back a yes or a no, true or false, on whether the map tile coordinate has that sprite flag. Let's put this function with all the map code on tab 1. We'll add it to the end of the page and call it is tile. In this function, first we'll use a function called mget, short for mapget, to find out what number sprite is at map coordinate xy, and then we'll store that sprite number in a variable called tile. Then we'll use a function called fget, short for flag get, to find out if that sprite has the tile type flag turned on or not. If you give fget a sprite number and a flag number to check, it will give you back a true or false on whether that sprite number has that flag turned on or off. Lastly, we'll return or give back that true or false with return has flag. And that's the end of our isTile function. We can now use this anytime we need to check to see if a particular xy coordinate is a certain type of map tile. Now we need a function that uses our new isTile function to tell a player if they can move onto a given map coordinate or not. Basically, it checks if a certain xy coordinate is a wall or not. We'll call it can move, and it needs an xy coordinate to check. This function's a bit tricky. Our isTile function gives back or returns a true or false whether a map tile coordinate uses a certain flag or not. So in this case, we're asking if that map coordinate is a wall. If is tile returns true, then we want can move to return false. So we do a trick with the word not that flips a true to a false and vice versa. This means that if is tile comes back with a true, then can move will give back false. And if is tile comes back with false, then can move will come back with true. Now we're ready to add code to actually make the player move. Switch over to code tab 2 where we have our player code. Add a function called move player. The first thing we need to do is make two variables called new x and new y and set these to where the player is right now. These two variables represent where the player is trying to go. Now we'll change those two variables based on which keys the player hits. To make the left, right, up, down symbols, we use shift L, shift R, shift U, and shift D for left, right, up, and down. Remember, 0 in the y direction is at the top of the screen, so if we subtract from y, we're going up. As you can see, hitting the movement keys will change the coordinates of where the player is trying to go. Now we need to check those new coordinates to make sure the player actually can move to that new location. This is where we can use our can move function. We can feed our can move function the new x and new y coordinates, and it will tell us if that new location is a wall or not. If we can move there, meaning it isn't a wall, great, but we need to make sure the player is not trying to walk off the map. We'll use a function called mid that will always make sure a number is in between two other numbers. Since the map is 128 tiles wide, we want to keep the new x coordinate between 0 and 127. And since the map is 64 tiles tall, we want to keep the new y coordinate between 0 and 63. This changes the player's p.x and p.y coordinates to new x and new y while still making sure those coordinates are on the map. Now, if we can't move onto the new x and new y coordinate, then we should play a sound like a bump sound to tell the player they're hitting something. We haven't made sound effect number 0 yet, so let's go do that. Go to the sound editor. Make sure to set the speed of the sound to something like 4 and the volume of the sound not too high. Then make just one low note so it sounds like a bump when you hit space to play the sound. This is now sound effect number 0, as you can see in the top left. This is the sound that will play when we run SFX 0. 
The very last step we need to do is tell our update function to run our move player function. This will make sure that every time the game updates, it looks to see if the player has pressed any keys and if so, tries to move the player. Okay, we're ready to test player movement. Hit Ctrl S to save and then Ctrl R to run the game. And there we go, our player moves. Notice that we can't walk off the top or left edge of the map, but we can walk off onto another screen of the map. Oh no, we need a way of having our game's camera follow the player around one map screen at a time. And that's what we'll add in the next step of the tutorial.